Okay, so let's uh, work in this end. This is going to be our defensive end, and this is a team that has the puck, and they're looking to break out of the zone. So I'm going to draw these players in. We'll put a defenseman here. We'll put a defenseman here. We'll put the forward here, a forward here, and a forward here. Wow, that's a big X. Okay, so let's draw the offensive players, and we'll put one. We'll put a defenseman here. We'll put a defenseman here. Uh, we'll put a forward here, a forward here, and a forward here. So the whole point of the trap is to uh, trap the puck or stop the puck in the neutral zone. So there's decisions that can be made here by both teams, but that's generally the basic idea. This orange team is going to want to trap this puck or not let this puck get by this red line. And if it does get by the red line, they want to make sure that it's dumped. Um, if it gets past red line, it can be dumped in and they can get the puck and come back the other way. So this is implemented by teams who uh, generally can't match up offensively with another team. And so they try and shut them down. And uh, that's why it was called the, uh, the, the dead puck days for so long. Or there's, there's lots of different names, but uh, let's go through this process. So I'm going to draw the puck here. And this little guy in the back of the net, this defenseman, he has the puck and he's looking to break out of the zone. Chances are he's going to pass it to this winger who is here or along the boards or somewhere along here. Now, that winger with the puck is going to try and come out usually along the boards this way. And he's going to be looking for a pass usually here. And what, why the trap is so effective is because instead of this winger trying to come in and cut off this pass here, he's actually going to curl and follow this guy up like this, forcing him more so towards the, uh, towards the boards. And that's the entire idea, to force play towards the boards. And the 1-3-1 one, one system works, works uh, similar that way as well, forcing the play to the boards. And we'll get into that next. But in this specific play, this winger is going to force this winger against the boards. And this other green guy here, winger is going to try and break out like this and uh, this this winger could be looking to pass the puck this way to that winger but what's also so effective is that this winger follows up like this and covers that man so that takes away that pass it also takes away uh, passes going this way sorry that was my phone there that went off <laughs> and we also have this defenseman here and he's going to be backing up kind of towards this way also forcing the play along the boards here want to make sure that the puck actually stays uh, along the boards now this Winger, this green winger breaking out, has a couple decisions. He can either A, ice the puck, which he's not going to want to do. He can send it back like this along the boards to this guy who's, who has since passed the puck and is probably coming this way. And that, that's one way you can get around the trap. But it, it's still, uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really help you break out your zone. So there's it, it is the best option, but it's still, it's still not a great option. But then that's why the trap is so effective. And so if he hypothetically, if he makes it here, he can dump the puck and ice it, which you see lots, unfortunately. He can bring it back this way, which I've already talked about. He can try and make the pass this way across the ice. But if he gets to here and he's looking to make the pass across the ice, uh, this defenseman has backed up to here. This winger is probably around this area. This winger has come back to this area. Uh, it's, there's usually no passes to be made, and that's why it's so effective. If he makes it to here, if this green winger makes it all the way up to here and crosses the red line, he can dump it in, dump and chase. That's a, that you see that all the time. That's, that's totally fine. Um, but that's the whole point of the trap is to make them make a decision either uh, here for the pass, for the ice around here, or to get across the red line and dump it in. And then the orange team can gather the puck and come back the other way. So that's one version of the trap. And, and the trap, this is a, a really tight trap. Uh, this is a very situational, in-the-zone kind of pressure trap. Uh, another kind of the trap is the one three one, which we'll talk about now. Okay, now let's talk some one three one. And if you're familiar with one three one, then you know that Guy Boucher of the Ottawa Senators is the master of one three one. He loves the system. He used it in Tampa, and he's using it currently in Ottawa. It was very effective in the playoffs last year against the Penguins. So basically, what the one three one system is is it's it's really strange because it's, it involves a lot of trust with your teammates and there's the perfect perfect example of this is a game between philadelphia and tampa bay a couple of years ago if you have a chance um google or not google a uh, youtube uh, tampa bay versus uh, philadelphia flyers trap and you'll see you'll see exactly what the one three system is um, but i'll try and explain it here as well all right let's draw in the defensive team one defenseman two defensemen what three forwards we'll put them there so the 1-3-1 one, one system is very simple. As you can guess, uh, we're going to put a forward here. We'll put a defenseman here. We'll put a forward here. We'll put a forward here. And we'll put a defenseman here. 1-3-1. One, one. Easy as pie, right? 
And it's basically easy as that. One three one system doesn't evolve a lot of pressure into here to make the pass. It's a waiting game, waiting game in the in the in the neutral zone. So say this guy has the puck. Little buddy back here, he has the puck. He can wait there all day. In the one three one system, these guys will not pressure him to move that puck. They're going to wait. They're going to wait until he decides which way to go. If he decides to go this way, which is totally fine. Either he maybe he skates up, maybe he passes it up to this guy. That's totally fine too. This guy is going to break over and force uh, the play to uh, or force the play against whoever has the puck. So he's going to force this guy to make a decision. Let's say this guy has the puck. He's he, it was passed to him. He's going to be forced to make the play. So in this situation, this guy keeps going up here. This guy will move in, pressure him. This guy will pressure him here. This guy moves over. This guy moves over. At the same time, covering these guys because these guys are all moving up like this. And it's going to force him to either dump the puck and ice the puck um, or pass the puck into the neutral zone. And this is where a lot of turnovers get, get caused because when, this, when you have three guys here, uh, you're cutting off so many uh, passing opportunities. And what this does is, like I said, causes turnovers. And if you can cause a turnover anywhere here, here, or here, um, what's really effective about the system is a very opportunistic style of hockey. If you can force a turnover, you instantly have puck possession and you head directly back into the zone while these guys are still, in, in theory, still moving up this way and skating up this way. This board is really messy. This is terrible. <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping you get my my gist here so if these guys can stop on a dime turn the puck over you're back into the zone usually on a three on two or a four on two and uh hopefully putting the puck in the net so that's basically the idea and if you can't turn the puck over here you want to force them to either ice the puck or allow them to get across the red line and dump in the puck same as the uh basically neutral zone trap that i explained in the first explanation so now that that's over let's uh, talk about the uh, left wing lock All right, let's talk some left wing lock. Now that I got the uh, lines all drawn back on the board here, we're gonna draw the defensive team. We'll put um, three of our forwards right here, breaking into the zone. I guess this is our offensive team this time. And we're gonna put, um, we're gonna put th our three forwards matching like this. Everything's gonna be matched up. All right, sorry, I'll put this guy actually over here. So as the puck moves up, we'll say that we'll say this guy has the puck and he's moving this way. And we'll put a little puck here so you know where it's going. So what the left wing lock does actually is um, these two wingers are going to keep backing up as normal. However, this winger here is going to actually come like this. And this defenseman's going to move over and this defenseman's going to move over and they're going to create a line of three. So this left wing is always going to drop back to create three defensive uh, or a line of three defensive players. Now, if this puck continues to go in this way, we'll say he makes it all the way to there. And uh, he actually breaks into the zone. We'll say this defenseman is probably here and this defenseman is here. And this winger is going to drop all the way back to here. So they're really putting a lot of pressure here. And plus you have this winger to worry about. He's probably over here too. There's all kinds of pressure going on here. And it's really the whole point of the left wing lock is to bring this left winger back and to create that line of three. Um, it's, it's commonly used by a few teams, but only in really specific situations or depending on who they play. Uh, so it's if you keep an eye out for it, it's not as common as the others, uh, but you'll definitely see it. Uh, teams like Montreal implement this. Chicago does this sometimes, although Chicago primarily does the 1-2-2. Uh, but that is, that is my understanding of the left wing lock.